Lord of Lords. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we fail. You brought us out of that miry clay. You brought us out of that pit. And you gave us freedom. You gave us life. Thank you, Jesus. You gave us all things through your blood, Jesus. And when you were at the cross, we were on your mind. Hallelujah. From age to age. Thank you, Lord. For it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Church is dismissed. You know that song that she sang just a moment ago. Lamb of God. I surrender all. It means a lot to me, that song. Bless him, Lord. When I was... Come on, brother. Preach it. When I was about 18, I would sit in my car in the morning, and I would listen. I had a little CD of that song, and I would listen as the world was pulling at my heart, and the devil was attacking me. But I remember listening to that song, and the Spirit of God would begin to work in me. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, to this day, I've never regretted surrendering my life to Jesus. No. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And during those trials, when I was a young man, and I still am, but when I was younger, when the devil was coming against me with everything, and the Lord kept me, if he did it then, he'll do it today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My Lord has proved himself to me. I said he's proved himself to me this morning. And he'll see you through. Glory to God. He'll see you through. I feel that this morning. Come on, preach it. Let oh, go, he'll brother. see you through. Oh, oh he'll see Ghost, you through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold on to that nail Touch scarred angel, hand Lord, this morning. He oh, Lord. he'll see you through. Glory Preach to it. God. Glory to God. Oh, you're oh crazy, Jesus, God. we need you this morning, Lord. Oh, we need your presence, Lord, in this service this morning. Or we won't make it to the next day, Lord. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us, Lord, this morning. Lord, we're asking you, Father God, for a move of God in this church, Lord. In our own hearts, in our own lives, Lord. Lord, we repent of our sin and our, our degradation. We repent of who we are, Lord. And we look to you, Lord God, to heal our land, to heal our circumstance, to heal this nation, to heal our churches, to heal, Lord God, our church. Lord, to heal, Father, Lord, those lost in iniquity and sin, Lord. We're calling out to your name, Lord, this morning as the only answer for what we need, Lord, in these last last days, Lord God. Lord, are we desperate for a move of yes, God, Lord, Lord, in this house this morning, that your presence uh, would go with us, Father, in the fight God, against our families, in the fight oh, against yes, our nation, hallelujah. in the fight against our pastors, oh, in the fight God. against, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, the battle is not ours, Father, but Lord, the yes, battle is Lord, yours. Battle and is if yours, you don't Lord. fight for us, we won't win, Lord, we won't go. But Father, you will fight, Lord, for you are mighty, Lord. Lord and powerful Lord God the enemy is too great for us but it's not too great for your spirit Lord yeah hallelujah hallelujah yes, hallelujah. hallelujah we're well able Lord God yes I Jesus. said we're well able Lord to go out and take Praise this mountain Jesus. Lord we're well able father God in your name we rebuke Hallelujah. every spirit of oppression. You, we rebuke every uh, disease, Lord God, yes. that is in this sanctuary. We rebuke yes. cancer in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all Touch spiritual Jesus, Lord oppression. God. Lord, we rebuke that devil that let, comes let against our troubled. family. We take authority, Lord God, now. over every principality and powers of darkness that comes against us, Father, in any way, shape, or form. Lord God, Lord God. God, Lord God, Father, you are able. Oh, Lord, you are able, God. Lord God. You're able, Father. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord. 
Hallelujah. Let Get faith build in us, Lord, this morning. Worm, Let away, your faith Lord. build us in us this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. We surrender, Lord, to you this morning. Oh, we surrender our pain. We surrender our iniquity. We surrender our inadequacies. We surrender our will to you, Lord, this morning. Do in us what you please, Father. Do in us what you please. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ora mashanda la Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to, Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Oh, behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Make thy path straight. Hallelujah. For the return of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Glory God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Mm, glory. I feel Jesus in this place this morning. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, sweet, sweet spirit. Hallelujah. Sweet, sweet, sweet spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, Praise you, Jesus. God, praise God, praise God, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, hallelujah, you know, when Abraham took his son Isaac up to that mount to sacrifice him, and he saw the altar, and he saw what was going to take place, and Isaac asked, where is the lamb? And Abraham said, the Lord will provide a sacrifice. And as we were worshiping the Lord, all I could think of was, thank God the Lord provided a sacrifice. Oh, we were deep in our sins and we were lost in our sins. But God Almighty provided a lamb. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The one that came down from heaven stepped foot into etern out of eternity into time and took away my sin. Hallelujah. The devil has no captive over me any longer. I'm no longer a slave to sin or the devil. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're going to continue on, but I do want to just make mention real quick. We have an election coming up, and I really don't care how you feel about the president. We need God to move in this election. And we need God to move in our churches and in our own hearts. Amen. Amen. If you know, if you have a prayer request, let's just bring it to the Lord. We're going to pray very quickly. If you need healing, if you need anything, you just take it to the Lord right now. Let's just pray over the election. Let's pray over our needs. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for the Spirit of God that has been in our midst, Lord, here this morning. And we just ask you, Father God, to move in this coming up election on Tuesday, Lord. That your will would be done, Lord. Help us to repent, Lord God, of our sins. Father, we repent, Lord, of our sleepness, Lord God, as a church body, Lord, as those around America. Father, help us to wake up, Lord, and seek your face, Lord. We ask you, Father, to move miracles, Lord God, in the polls and the swing states, Lord. In the election, Father, coming in, not only in our presidential, Lord, but in our house, Lord God, in the Senate. Father, we just ask you to move mightily, Lord, on our behalf, Lord. Lord, move mightily, Lord God, in this coming up election, Father. And we just pray for every need that is in the body of Christ, Lord, this morning. We just pray that you would heal every sick body. That you would save every unsaved loved one, Lord. That you would move in our circumstance. That you would move in our midst, Lord. If you don't move, Lord God, if you don't do it, Lord God, then no one else can, Father. But you are able, Father. You are able, Lord God, to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or that we could think. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Lord, just meet the need, Lord, whatever it may be, Lord. We just give you all the praise and all the glory. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to receive our tithe and offer. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Serve a mighty God. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Gary, would you pray over this offering, brother?
Six years ago today, Jesus saved my soul. Waiting for a bus on the street corner, Oakland, California. And I've been with him a long time. It's an honor to serve him. Thank you. You know, many times we forget there's a testimony in each and every heart of every man, every woman, and every child. We hear many times that Kobe as a Pastor Kobe, Reverend Kobe, Minister Kobe, come on now, Kobe, and uh, he talks about when he was a very young child and gave his life to the Lord. But I was 27. And I was sharing with Karen this morning, Sister Karen, excuse me, that when I came to the Lord, I had nothing but chaos and emptiness in my life. And it's easy to dance with the Lord if you've ever danced with the devil and many times I've told people that and some don't even understand what I mean when I say that but I love the dance that I dance today and I wouldn't take anything from my journey at this time I'm going to give a few minutes to brother Dave here he uh, has a testimony that he wants to share and uh, I believe that if you have a testimony, if you have something to share, this is the people that need to hear it. And those who show up today, we're here for a specific reason. That's what God does. Good morning. This testimony is kind of a long one, but where it started is when I was young. I was, our mother and my sister Lorraine and our mother would drag us to a Bab First Baptist Church in Rupert, Idaho every week. And I hated it, but I accepted the Lord Jesus at eight years old and got baptized eight years old. And when I got in high school, Minical there, I had buddies. And I wanted to do the things they wanted to do, and so I'd go out and start drinking and partying with them. But the one thing I made sure that I tried to never do was use the Lord's name in vain. I would never use Jesus or God. But I, I would, uh, but I would cuss and other things. And I was living a miserable life. And then I met Nikki, and we got married in Burley area. 
And then, <laughs> she says, then, then I the was misery really, miserable. really began. But uh, I heard her. We moved up to Haley because I've always wanted to live up by Haley and Sun Valley, and and then I we had Brian or Darby and Clint, our two boys, and and then we decided or I decided I says I'm going to drag them to church, so I started dragging them to church, and we'd go to church. And Darby is five, and basically what we started to do is I'd drop them off at. Sunday school, and then Nikki and I go back home, and one day, and then we go pick him up, and Darby says, well, why aren't you going to church? Why do I have to go there? So we started going to Sunday school, and anyway, as it goes on, we, we started attending a Baptist church, because I was raised Baptist in Haley, and then we moved to Boise. We were going to a Baptist church here, but I would read the Bible, and I didn't understand it. I, I didn't really know the Bible, and and we decided to go visit my sister Colleen. My sister Colleen and my brother Gary have gone on to be with the Lord, and I know they're saved. And we celebrated in a way because we knew they were saved, but others probably didn't. But uh, anyway, we went up to visit my sister Colleen and her family in Seattle. And they were going to have a Bible study on a Friday night. And she said, do you want to go? Yeah. And she says, well, our church is a little different. And it, you might be shocked. And I says, well, okay, I'll go. And it was a Pentecostal church she goes to. So anyway, we went to this Bible study, and they were studying Acts. And in Acts, they were talking about speaking in tongues. And I, about halfway through, I said, well, I want to speak in tongues. And they says, okay. And they says, okay. And they, they was in a living room, and the couch, there was... You could walk behind the couch, so I sat on the couch, and the girl, women went in this other room and, and prayed, and they were praying for me, speaking in tongues, and when they were praying in tongues, I kind of laughed to myself, and I said, what is this baloney? I said, what is this? And I, then I said, well, God, this is, if this is from you, I want it. And all of a sudden, my tongue swelled up, and I started babbling like a caveman. It sounded like a caveman. And then all of a sudden, in a twinkle of an eye, I was on my knees, and I was looking down at Jesus' feet. I was in heaven. I was on kind of a marble or some white pedestal. I don't know, but I was looking at his feet, and I felt like the scum of the earth. I felt like I was the most worthless person in the universe. I can't... I hope I don't get emotional here, because it's hard to... <laughs> But I felt like the most scum in the universe, and I was looking at his feet. And all of a sudden, there was like a movie screen went by and started showing my past, you know, the things that me. I was not proud of. He was showing these things to me, and then all of a sudden, peace come over me, just total peace. Just a peace I can't explain. I'm still on my knees looking at Jesus' feet. And then I felt this love. I can't explain it. Your mother loves you, I hope. <laughs> My mother really loved us, and, I, and there, I can't explain the love. She had nothing, no love compared to what God has for us. I just want to, God wants you to know that. He loves his people so much, you can't imagine how much he loves us. But I was, and then I saw this screen of the movie projector go by, and, and, and then Jesus reached down with his hand, and I took his hand and lifted up and was looking at Jesus in his face. I can't really tell you anything. I, I'm not sure what color eyes he had, whether blue or brown or what. All I know is they penetrated me. I just, oh, I, you can't imagine. When you, you see the face of Jesus, you just, you're just blown away. And then I noticed above me, there was this kind of an emerald cloud. I don't know how to explain it, but I re I didn't know this. Later on, I read in Revelations, John went up there and saw this rainbow, and I, I guess that's what it was. But I saw this cloud above me, and I saw kind of a cloud behind. And I was looking up at that cloud, and it was like lo beautiful lights going through that cloud. It was so beautiful, I can't describe it. It was just beautiful. And then I was started, I was looking... I started to look, wondering what's going on. I was blown away, you know, what's going on? I don't know, my wife's giving me signals. 
Oh, the mic. <laughs> anyway, I looked, I was just, and I could see behind, and I could see this cloud, like an emerald cloud behind me, and I could see a throne. I, I'm not kidding. I saw this throne, and I saw somebody on it. I, I, it was God. I knew it. God just, you just know everything when you're in heaven. He just tells you. <laughs> you just can see it, and you know it. Then I started looking around, and as I was looking around, I was so blown away. I started thinking of my, my dad. He was an alcoholic, and my, Nikki's dad was an alcoholic. And they, we were, we'd been going to church for a while, and we was worried about him. So I, I was trying to concentrate, and I asked God, what about my dad and her dad? And he said, they'll be saved. They'll be with me, and your whole family will be saved. He gave me that insurance that he was going to bring them in. And I was so happy, but I started looking around a little more. I was wondering, what is going on? You know, you, it, I can't explain it. I said, what's going on? So I started looking around, and I was looking over here, and there was, there was millions, I don't know, angels or people standing with the robe, white robes on them with their hands raised. And I wondered, what's, what's wrong with them? Is there something wrong? Or, as they facing the judgment, why they got their hands? Because I don't have anything against Baptists, but at that time they didn't raise their hands like we do in the Pentecostal church. I love to raise my hands because when I raise my hands and praise God, I can just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit surrender. so much. But I, I looked around and they were all in white robes and there was millions and millions of them, pr people praising the Lord and I didn't understand it. And then I, I started to go back, and then I was, all, all of a sudden, Jesus took my hand. And it was like I just started hit, hit throw it, going through the universe, like I was traveling through the universe. Next thing, I was sitting back there and on the couch at this Bible study. I was sitting there, and my sister says, what's wrong? My sister, Colleen. And I, I couldn't explain it. I, I was so blown away. I didn't know what to say. I, I, I went in the back kitchen and I told her later what happened. But I was just blown away and I was in that Bible study. And then we went to their church Sunday in their Pentecostal church. And when they were in their, in their church, everybody started raising their hands, praising God. And I said, I know what they were doing. They were praising God. All those white robes had their hands up were praising God. They were worshiping God. So I, the only reason, I think God laid it on my heart to tell you this because I don't know why. I don't know why he chose me to do that. God has his own reasons why he chose, chooses people. He has his own reasons. Amen. Why he chooses only thing I know is I'm giving this testimony now because I saw heaven. And I want to tell you something. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Which one are you going to choose? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. If you have your Bible, I'd like for you to turn with me to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes is a word for the preacher or the messenger and I've always enjoyed listening to the preacher but I looked at the setting of scripture that is here and I want to talk to you just a little bit about where I've come and where you will go as you journey along your way toward heaven. Each and every one of us has a journey. It's nobody else's. It's yours and yours alone. 
When you get to heaven, you won't be on my coattail. You won't be following after your mother's coattail. You will be standing alone on a personal relationship with God. And we're in a time and an age where they are looking to men. But I want you to know something. I'm not the best preacher ever came down the pike. In fact, I am humbled that God even chose me. But I know that God knows my heart. And the other day when we were talking to somebody, Nancy, and I, there's one thing that I have in my life, and that's perseverance. I've persevered through many things in many places, just like how many of you can say, I've persevered through the atrocities of this world? Come on now. Two people. All right. The rest of you are blessed, and I'm so glad you're so blessed. But I want you to know something. I know that you, in your heart, know you've gone through adversity, and you've come out the other side victorious. That's the way it should be. And I know that Many of you were watching me to see how I would respond to my son's death. And I probably didn't do it as well as some of you did. But you know what? I do know one thing. That my love for my son is for eternity. And my God knows that eternity. He knows the heart of every man, woman, and child. But I had to go back and realize just exactly how everything exists and who brought into existence all things. So I know that when we go and we read a book and we go and we hear a new phenomena of what revelation is or we go and we hear another study on James and and we go through all of these things and we have these books to take us there and we listen to these books I want you to see what it is in my life the books meant nothing oh I read them and I read them some of them cracked me up and it's like reading a joke book hello because I don't know where he got his philosophy, but the thing is, his theology was off. So I began to look and think of these things, and here's the best thing I could come up with. Let every man be a liar and God be the truth. Now that's not my word, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let every man be a liar and God be the truth. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. If I had a sermon titled today, it'd be, How'd you get here? How did you get here? And so if you have your Bible, I want you to go with me into the 8th verse of Ecclesiastes 12. Father in heaven, your word is sharp. It cuts the bone from the marrow, the soul from the, the soul from the spirit. And Lord, you've taken us out of sin and put us in a place where we can walk again. The clay that held our feet tight no longer holds us down. I would not take anything for my journey. It was my journey. Mine alone. The choices I made were my choices. For I know that the Spirit of God is a gentleman and will not cross my will. I chose those things. And I've chosen you today. And I've chosen you a long time ago. I pray that in the name of Jesus you showed this day your word and let it be life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And I look around me and I see many things. I went on 
uh, day star, daylight, uh, sunshine, whatever it was. And I watched this thing. It's all I can call it, a thing. The lights were out psychedelic things on the wall and I thought man am I listening to in God of in the God of Davida you know I, I didn't know whether uh, I was in a church or I was out at a bar somewhere I couldn't understand the words that's okay but I didn't feel the spirit either and I watched as they had a mosh pit. And the mosh pit was not so much like I've seen mosh pits where they're bashing each other, but it was a mosh pit just the same. And oh, maybe that helps people to cross a bridge. Maybe it helps them to come into the things of Christ and live for the Lord. And I pray that some do, or all of them do. But I don't understand it. But God way, God's ways are not my ways, and therefore that which I do not understand is my lack of understanding. But I know one thing. It's not for me. I watched this in horror thinking, is this where the church is going? Is this what the church is? I won't tell you who or what because I will not come against and touch God's anointed if they be God's anointed. But I will tell you this. The Bible tells me, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright. That which was written was upright, even words of truth. The word of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the master's assemblies which are given from one shepherd and further by these my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh let us hear the conclusion now come on here's where it, the rubber meets the road this is where the bear eats the white rabbit. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is the conclusion? Reverence God. Honor God. Give God glory. Fear God. Keep His commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil I want you to know something today if someone asks about your educational background you need to proclaim church I said you need to proclaim boldly that the church is your college heaven is your university the church is your college. The heaven is your university. Father God is your principal. And Jesus is your counselor. I want you to know the Holy Spirit is my teacher. Angels and the saints are my classmates. The Bible is my textbook. Overcoming temptation is my hobby, and defeating Satan is my exam. Winning souls for God is my assignment. <laughs> That's what God has called us out of the miry clay to do, to reach out into the highways and the byways, compelling men unto Christ. We don't understand the word compel. The word compel means to enforce and to drive and to see them through to the end. 
Well, I'll leave that there. Receiving eternity is my degree. Praise and worship, my school anthem. Being a child of God is my goal, my goal in all that I have done. My doctorate in ministry, my master's in theology means nothing if not put into practice. James said that was the way it should be. He said, if you say you love God and have no works, I'll show you my love for God by my works. What are your works today? Where are you going today? What have you done today? What are you doing for Jesus? Are you on fire? Do you remember when you used to speak in tongues? Do you remember when you were filled with the Holy Ghost? Has the Holy Ghost been so far from you, you can't even give a tongue or an interpretation or pray for the sick and watch them be healed? Let me tell you something. I don't care where I've been. I don't care what's happened in my life. What matters is where I'm going with Jesus Christ. It's where you're going, not where you've been. Everybody here has seen a lighter day and a better day, but Jesus is making a way, and we may not understand it, but on the second point of all of this, I look at the wonderful counselor, and this literally means a wonder of a counselor. Isaiah called him, the name would be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Let me tell you something, Jesus is there when you need him. I found myself this week in a place of derision. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to say, but I said, God, here am I, and I confessed each and every one one of the things in my life and I said God if you can't take them away if you can't make things right if you can't give me victory why am I here a few days later I found myself I was crying every day for a week every day couldn't stop it and I know that God gives man wisdom. God gives man knowledge. God opens the eyes of men. Coronavirus isn't going to be forever. I want you to know something. AIDS was and everyone had a problem, but AIDS is now. But I want you to know one thing. God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. I said, God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. I've been through the school that God has given me, and it's called the school of neology. It's where we find God the most. It's when we fall on the floor and we suck the rug. We're so low we realize that there's travail, and when Zion travails, she'll bring forth children. It's not up to me to build a church. It's not up to me. It's never been up to me, and I knew that. But I've persevered over splits, persevered over persecutions, persevered over all of those things, because you know what? God spoke to me this morning in tongues and interpretation. Are you looking at the glass half full? <laughs> Are you looking at the glass half empty? It's easy for us when we read the news. Oh, we don't read newspapers anymore. We pull this thing out and we get all we need, right? We pull this out and we can thumb through it. And I was at a place the other day and there was no conversation going on with anybody. Even at the dinner table, nobody was having conversation. Everybody had that down there going like this. We would rather listen to people on this than to have a social meeting with one another. It's time to take back what the enemy has stolen. 
It's time to take back those things which God gave us. We need to realize that many things that go on today are not of God, and we know it, but we let it happen anyway. Isn't it time that the Christian cry out like the, the minority? The minority is the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. When are we as the majority that we are going to open up and let our silence be far behind us and begin to reach out and proclaim the love and the life that we have in Jesus Christ and say, I will not allow one more abortion. I will not allow one more homosexuality to be called normal. I will not allow immorality to be that which is the norm. Evil is not good. Good is good. Hallelujah. And good is not bad. I began to look at this and I looked at the word mighty counselor, which means wonderful counselor, which means if you go to the Hebrew, it means a wonder beyond the phenomena of man's intellect. In other words, it means that which we cannot comprehend in a higher place. It's a place that brings peace. I could not find peace no matter where I went until I went on my face before God and I felt like I was in the back of the church working my way back up to the front of the church again. I want you to know that it's up to us to realize just exactly where we stand in all of this. I've been to the waters. I've been through the flood and it didn't overtake me. I've been to the fire but it did not consume me. I want you to know when you can't get over the mountain, God will bore a hole through it. I want you to know that you have life above and beyond what you can comprehend because when you have no peace, He becomes your peace. When I am weak, He is made strong. I never claimed to be strong. I was a fighter, but I never said I was strong. If I was strong, smell isn't everything. Psalms 130, uh, 159, 6, it says the same words is used in that. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. <laughs> it describes something miraculous. Has the church lost sight of the miraculous? Aline Baxley used to come to our church about every other year and she would share her testimony of her vision of hell while she was in a hospital bed. And souls would be saved because the anointing of the Holy Ghost was upon her to proclaim the beauty of the miraculous. The beauty that comes when you reach Jesus. I wasn't as fortunate as I heard today to get saved as a young child. Oh, I knew who God was, and I went to a Baptist church, and when Dad was in the hospital in my formidable years, I know that... Uh, or years of forming, uh, I knew that if you light a candle at the Catholic Church that your prayers would ascend unto the heavens and so on. And I learned how to kneel and I learned how to say amen and, and all of these things. And I learned how to fill in every E and every D and every C on the bulletin 
so that my dad would do that and give me a pen and give me a butterscotch lifesaver so that I would shut up, sit, and be still. You see, we didn't have children's church in those days. You sat by your parents and you learned how to be in church. Come on now. It was the day of days. But I want you to see something, something very important. When we've gone through things that brought us to the place of chaos and emptiness, we realized there was only one place we could go. One place that would fill the hole in our life. We could be in a, a crowd of thousands and be alone. But yet, one day, drugs, sex, money, all the vices of this world, alcohol, immorality, all of these things could not fill that hole. And we tried only to find out that that one place in our life could only be filled with Jesus. You can search this world from here to yon, but you'll never find peace till you find Jesus. And I know that when I was in my truck that day, screaming at the top of my lungs, yelling as loud as I could be and could not even speak afterwards because my voice was gone. I want you to know something. After all of that, I heard a voice that said, you ready to shut up? Now, come on, church. God talks to you the way God talks to you, but God talks to me in the way that gets my attention. Moreover, he'll usually say, are you done yet? Has anyone heard that besides me? Are you done yet? I guess that's just for the ecclesiastic. But that's when I realized, as I listened to his small, still voice, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice, another they will not hear. And I began to listen. It wasn't theoretic. It wasn't a thought. It was life. In a soothing, small, still voice, it says, it doesn't matter, Chip. It doesn't matter. It's over. It's okay now. Anyone ever heard those words? It's okay now. You see, heaven suffered violence and the violent took it by force. But if you think about Daniel, Daniel believed God and it shut the lion's mouth. Sometimes if we'll just take time to just believe when we hear that voice it's not you it's not the devil it's God speaking to you telling you it's okay now you'll be fine I'll show you and I'll show you the way remember Lord and he says in his small, still voice, did you forget that I'll take that burden? Did you forget that I'll take away those things and I'll carry them for you? Let it go. Can I get a witness? Let it go. Because when you do, you realize just who they are. 
the Holy Ghost, Father God, and Jesus Christ, a triune Godhead. And we were made in His likeness and His image. So I want you just to remember this. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Let it go. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, a new creature. You're born again. I could share my testimony, but it's not. It would be too ugly. But the good part of it was, it wasn't too ugly for God. He took it away. How many of you can say, you know what? I have a wonder of a counselor. I have a wonder of a counselor. It adds up to a marvelous truth that when we are at that place, he becomes the total sum of all things. Stand with me. I didn't get to go through everything, but some of you would probably say, Amen. I was going to go into Luke 2, 46 and 47, and uh, 240 and Malachi and Micah, and I have all kinds of scriptures here. But the word, <laughs> wonderful, means it's far beyond the abilities of the human mind to comprehend, far beyond the ability of the human mind to even express, because it's holy, it's unfathomable. Some would say supernatural, but God's far beyond the supernatural. God is and was and always will be God. But we have to find him the way we find him. What's sin for you may not be sin for me. That's why when they call me for jury duty, I say, nope, not for me. Let God be the ultimate judge of all things, good and bad. But my whole duty is to love him. My whole duty is to love him and keep his commandments. Now, I want you to know something. There's a new commandment, and it's old. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit. And this fulfills all the law of the prophets. Would you bow your heads? The New Testament is the practical application of his teaching to my life and your life. Some say we don't need the Old Testament. The Old Testament was my schoolmaster. The New Testament is my teacher. If you're here today you feel like your glass is half empty. He wants to fill you up. He wants you to have a more positive attitude and gratitude. For eight months, 
It's interesting how it came down to something so simple. Jesus rightly deserves the name Mighty God. Because he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You're here today, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're here today, and there's things that trouble you beyond measure. I pray for many of you every day. And I pray for many others on the next day. And I pray for the church every day. Oh, not like you might pray. The Pharisee thinks that many words are the necessity. But I found that the simple words touch the heart of God when you speak from your heart. God knows you. He created you. He called you by name in the womb. So many children who could have changed so many things in this world cut off. Never to be seen, never to be heard. But you're here. Don't take for granted one moment of your life and don't leave this world with regret. For our departure is at hand. And we have to be prepared for that time. You're hurting in your heart and it's breaking. Jesus is here for you. You have fear and you need to get rid of it. You have sorrow, let it go. But most of all know that we are the church. We're here to love one another. We're here to pray for one another. We're here to encourage one another and bind up the brokenhearted, lift up the hands that hang down. And so many people who don't give so many people the time of day but the Bible t says to bless those who, per who persecute you and not to curse them. Bless them who spitefully use you. The Bible tells us to just do the opposite of what you want to do. Because they're not of your stature, don't run away. Listen. Everybody has a testimony. Everybody came out of a bad place at one time in their life. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for life. I thank you for the life that is hid in Christ. I thank you for the Holy Spirit who teaches us each day and opens our eyes to see with revelation and Raymond knowledge. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the comfort that we receive each day is the comfort that only you can give. And I know that right now there are many who aren't in this church today, but they're watching on YouTube. 
And I pray for them where they're at, that, Lord, you just bless them abundantly. And I pray that you just continue to bless each and every one. Open our eyes of understanding. And let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, Amen. Shake hands, hug. Well, do what you